Recording in progress. Ready to go? We're we waiting for Christine or? Okay, at this time we're going to call to order the meeting of October 4th, 2021. City Attorney, is there anything you want to mention before we go to close session? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If the City Council so moves, it will go into closed session to discuss the items agendized for closed session discussion, which are item number one, conference with the legal counsel pursuant to government code section 54956.9a, existing litigation. The title of that case is LLXP Inc. versus City of Hollister et al in San Benito Superior County Court, case number CU21-00119. And item number two, conference with legal counsel anticipated litigation, significant exposure to litigation pursuant to government code section 54956.9b, two potential cases. That's all, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Do we have any speaker cards? We have no speakers, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Is there a motion to move to close session? So moved. Second. Okay. There's a motion and second. Roll call, please. <clears throat> Council Member Perez? Yes. Council Member Burns? Yes. Vice Mayor Resendez? Yes. Mayor Velasquez? Yes. Motion carries 4 0. Thank you.
Yes. yes. Vice Mayor Resendez? Yes. Mayor Velasquez? Yes. Motion carries 4 0. Thank you. We'll now move to item A1. Mr. Burns? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I would ask that um, the minutes be amended to include the fact that during closed session, I excused myself of my own choosing. Well, uh, one of five items was heard that had potential litigation, and I excused myself from item number one. Okay. And that would complete my request. Thank, Thank you, Thank you. Any questions, comments from council? He just wanted that reflected onto the minutes that he accused himself, excused himself from that item. But okay. I, I don't think I normally put closed session minutes on our minutes. Because I'm not in closed session. It's just for the record, if you can just put here. Okay. Right. So for the, and I'm sorry, I'm looking, I think I'm looking at the correct minutes here. And you may have said this, Council Member Burns. It regarded item number three, potential litigation. Is that correct? Yes. All right. Thank you. So which item? Item, item number one. Num I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Oh, thank you. Item number three, potential litigation. So noted. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. A motion and second. Roll call, please. Council Member Perez? Yes. Council Member Burns? Yes. Vice Mayor Resendez? Yes. Mayor Velasquez? Yes. Motion carries 4 0. Thank you. We'll now move to item A2. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, a number two, I would just ask that the, there be an amendment on uh, page 31 where it talks about um, line one where I made a motion and then line two where I seconded the motion. And I, I would like to be able to have that authority, but um, <laughs> I, I believe Council Member Perez seconded that motion for clarification. Thank you, Mayor. I've been looking for that authority too. <laughs> And all the votes. Thank you. Is there any questions from council? No speaker cards on this item, correct? I have no speakers, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. We, I was going to say, is Mr. Burns going to second that too? <laughs> I know. That's, that's what I was waiting for. <laughs> There's a motion and second. Roll call vote, please. Council Member Press? Yes. Council Member Burns? Yes. Vice Mayor Resendez? Yes. Mayor Velasquez? Yes. Motion carries 4 0. Thank you. We are now going to move to public input. This is the time for anyone in the audience to speak on any item not on the agenda and within the subject matter jurisdiction of the council. Speaker cards are available in the lobby and are to be completed and given to the city clerk before speaking. When the city clerk calls your name, please come to the podium. State your name and city for the record and speak to the city council. If you are joining us by Zoom, please click on the bottom of your screen to raise your hand. If you are joining us by Zoom using a cell phone, please press star nine. Each speaker will be limited to three minutes with a maximum of 30 minutes per subject. Please note that state law prohibits the city council from discussing or taking action on any item not on the agenda. Do we have any speakers? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Joseph M. Hurst. Hurst. Hello. Uh, my name is Joseph M. Hurst. I'm a small business owner. I operate uh, a mobile food facility called Steak Stop, um, and I found it very difficult to get through the bylaws and, and to really understand the regulations of what it is I can and can't do uh, within the city limits and, and, and the guidelines. Um, I've heard from different public officials several different things. Uh, number one being that I could operate if I've been invited to a place of business by the business owner and I can go ahead and, and, and do my, uh, my service there. I've also found that that isn't okay. Um, I've also heard that you can uh, have a food facility out in uh, the, uh, like that technology park way out by the airport. 
Um, but even going through that process has been very difficult and very challenging. Um, there's a lot of individuals like myself that have been displaced because of COVID. We're trying to find ways to combat uh, what what has happened, and, and you know, this is one of the areas that we or I personally have found uh, that I could easily afford and and and, and really prosper personally and, and, and financially. I, I've been a part of this community for my entire life. I do call Hollister my home. Um, I've always wanted to bring my service to this area and, and you know, and, and, and that's what I want. Um, this is a great opportunity for, for small businesses to, to kind of rebuild and, um, and, and, uh, and to beat the pandemic and the challenges that, that, that were overcome. So I just really think that we need to talk about it and open up the subject again and, and find clarification on what can and can't be done so that uh, other people like me, and I know of at least three people that are either building trucks or in the process of buying trucks that want to move into this uh, into the city limits and do exactly what it is that I'm doing. So I'm not the only one. And uh, if we don't prepare, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be displaced even further from from this pandemic. And I don't think anybody wants that. So uh, I, I really thank you for taking the time to listen to me and, and, and hopefully we can do something about this. Thank you for coming out. More speakers, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. We are now going to move to item D1, city manager report. Yeah, what I would say is uh, anybody that the, uh, for food trucks, definitely talk to our planning department. Uh, Abraham Prado is uh, will definitely listen to you. He's right behind it also. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that's all I have to report. I was going to say, I know we did have this conversation a few years back, and it was uh, cleared up on how to do it correctly so mr prado can absolutely help you thank you for coming out do you have anything else sir that was it item d2 training and conferences hi mr mayor council thank you for coming thank you for having me up here uh, we just had two employees that just got back from san luis obispo attending the california conference of arson investigators um, where they do a continuing education on their CVs, their curriculum vitae. So it's kind of, it's mandatory for them to be uh, doing their continuous education. And they were able to get back into the, the class where they do various uh, live, live fire um, simulations, and investigations, and updating them all the current codes and laws. Thank That's you. That's all I have. Thank Any you. questions from council? Any speaker cards? No, Mr. Mayor. And then, uh, or, Chief, uh, Chief, go ahead. Oh, yes, Mr. Mayor, uh, we had two officers attend uh, FTO school, uh, field training officer school, so they received that uh, mandatory training, reimbursable through post, um, so they can be our instructors for new uh, new trainees, new officers that we may hire. We also had a sergeant attend an IDI instructor technology course, that is a uh, instructor development institute, which. Uh, helps them become become the teachers and what we do is we later on send them to train a trainer courses where then they become our own instructors in-house and therefore save money for uh, the tr additional training for officers in the future and we also had three individuals attend the women leadership in law enforcement a conference that was put on by the California Police Chiefs Association um, they do that every year it's a, it's a really good event uh, it, provides um, a lot of examples and a lot of instruction on leadership and especially uh, in regards to women in law enforcement. And that's uh, the training we had in September. Thank you, sir. Do we have any others? That is it. Thank you. We'll now move to item F1. Looks like I'll do this one for everybody. So uh, th thank you, Council. Uh, what we are asking is for Council to approve a professional services agreement with M.A. Jones, Inc. for cleaning services to provide citywide janitorial services for the city for the next three years. 
Any questions? Thank you. Any questions, Council? Mayor Velasquez. Thank you, sir. So, um, if I read the contract correctly, this would be for three years, and it's about eighty-five hundred bucks a month for a total of about a hundred and two thousand a year. Is that correct? Correct. And I'm curious. I saw that we put out an RFP, and there were three three bidders. Uh, if I read it correctly, this uh, recipient or proposed recipient actually operates business out of Gilroy. Is that correct? Correct. Were the, either of the other two a local uh, vendor? I don't recall. I'm sorry. Okay. We, we have had a hard time trying to get people to bid in the past. I know that. Okay. Um, I, I've said it before, and I'll probably continue to say it, but... Um, I'm concerned why we don't have internal staff that could perform this task. And particularly with um, a full-time position and benefits, I think we could do this internally at that cost or maybe even less. Um, I, I saw in the contract where they have three employees that they've identified but my sense is those aren't full-time employees from having reviewed the contract and reviewing the scope of the work. And so I'm not going to support this. I would like to see it come in-house. And if the rest of the council views it differently, uh, I would ask to, I, I saw where the insurance is a million dollars, and we had this conversation just recently, I believe last uh, council meeting, where if, if council is going to approve this, I'd like to see the insurance uh, increase to the five million dollar rate and that concludes my questions and comments thank you mayor thank you sir any other questions or comments i uh i'll make a quick comment i it'd be great to have local companies doing it uh, i understand it's sometimes it just doesn't happen um, this is a company we've had for a while here and correct staff i think you've all been pretty happy with the the service they provided. Uh, I'm not opposed to having somebody in-house doing it, but I think um, at this point, if we're going to do that, maybe at the next three-year point, we're we're looking at that and having a better review of if that's possible or how many facilities they visit in a day or how often. I think it'd be helpful to understand long-term. And as far as insurance, I, I think yeah, we did have that conversation about uh, insurance requirements going up definitely I, but I think it really comes down to the what type of work they're doing I think in this case it's a cleaning service so I don't think they can do uh, much harm to any one facility I know in construction basically it's uh, two million is, is a minimum and then a lot of companies are going to five million based on size of the project so when you're working on a project that's three four million dollars <coughs> then it's usually going up to that $5 million point. But I think for the smaller businesses, I think a million is fair. And again, two million is also fair if it's, uh, there's more at stake property-wise or something to get damaged. So, you know, I, I, here's the thing, I, I agree with what you're saying. <laughs> but I think at this point, I, I, I think they went through the process and I think maybe should be a conversation um, in two years to see if that's, or what I could suggest is part of our budget process to start exploring what that would uh, cost and then bring that as a comparison f as part of our budget process. Right. Because, I mean, it does have a termination clause in it. Yeah. How, what, how much notice? Uh, I believe it's 30 days. 30 days, nice. okay. That'd be interesting to see. Yep. Any other questions? Council Member Perez, go ahead, sir. Yeah, so um, the, um, when you put this, this out for bid, how, how, what, what is that process? Where do you, where did you put it out to bid? I mean, do you? Because uh, I, I personally, I know two cleaning services that have been asking me to. Uh, they're looking for their local companies and they're looking for for businesses. Yeah, uh, we just the staff will go out and try to find the different businesses and and send that information that we are accepting bids. So they just get the information out to the. And pretty much anybody that they can find and and I couldn't find on here where there was like a total of hours that they're putting in a month oh. is, is that is that in there I didn't see that 
Yeah, it'll be on page, or exhibit A, A1 on page 146 of the packet. It does say uh, how many times they daily service. Yeah, they don't say the hours, but it says like who they visit. Yeah, that's. I was looking more for something more specific. Like okay, hours. sorry, no, they don't but, have uh, that. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I I could. Uh, they. How long have they been with us? Uh, I'm trying. To, it's been. I believe, Christine. Do you recall? It seems more around five years. Yeah, and then you know that's 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 great, and I don't think there's any real complaints about their work or anything. I, I would I would uh, I'd like to see this contract go for two years and and see what other local businesses or other b businesses um, because I'm not sure that we're reaching out locally to uh, okay. our local vendors, but I, I would I would agree to two years. Thank you, sir. Any other questions, comments? Um, Mr. Mayor. Go ahead, sir. I, I think that both of you, everybody brought up valid points and I definitely support hiring local. Um, but I think at this point where we're at, I'll definitely support, um, make it a motion if uh, council member Perez will entertain me to, <clears throat> to minimize it to two years and then to revisit it at that time. Thank you, but we're gonna go now then to uh, any speaker cards, public comments. I have none. Okay. So we have, a, is there a motion? I'll move to adopt with an amendment of minimizing it to two years. I think it was three years before? Yes, it was. That's my motion. Okay, is there a motion? Is there a Se second? Second. Motion and a second. Roll call vote, please. Council Member Perez? Yes. Council Member Burns? No. Vice Mayor Resendez? Yes. Mayor Velasquez? Yes. Motion carries 3-1. We are now gonna to move to item F2. Good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor and city council members. My name is Sydney Vega. I work in the city's human resources division. It's nice to see you all again. So this item tonight is for a, uh, to adopt a job description for a senior public works inspector position. We currently have one position budgeted, but it is a newer budgeted position, so we do not currently have a job description yet. Um, this would define a clear outline of the duties and uh, requirements for the position so that we can move forward with um, recruiting and hopefully filling that. Do you have any Thank questions? You. Are there any questions from council? Do we have any speaker cards? I have no speakers, Mr. Mayor. Is there a motion? So moved. There's a motion, is there a second? Second. Motion second, roll call vote please. Council Member Press? Yes. Council Member Burns? Yes. Vice Mayor Resendez? Yes. Mayor Velasquez? Yes. Motion carries 4-0. Thank you, good night. Thank you very Thank much. You. We'll now move to item F3. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. Um, item F3 is uh, the redistricting and I do have our consultant, um, Lapkoff and Goblet, um, ready to do a, a quick presentation. But I just wanted to let you know that although I am requesting an appropriation for $61,000, um, in January you had already approved on resolution 2021-15, um, 52-5, and during the budget process in June, I did not roll that money over from last budget year to this budget year. So I'm, I'm requesting that that get rolled over. So really in addition, what I'm asking for tonight is $9,000. That $9,000 would be to cover for up to eight meetings for Lapkoff and Goblet to attend virtually. And I'm not sure if we'll need all eight, but just it would be a up to. And in addition to that, um, there is a charge for when the public starts submitting maps that they would like to have changed or any council member or staff submits a map that they'd like to see um, the lines be redistricted to. That would cover the cost of up to 20 of those um, to be reviewed by Lapkoff and Goblet. Okay, is there any questions from council? 
So if I could introduce Shelley Lapkoff and have her go ahead and, and do the presentation. Go ahead. Hi there. Hi there. Uh, <laughs> pleasure to be here remotely with you. Um, I need to share my screen. Okay. Okay, can everybody see that? Uh, we see a... Okay, great. Not much, but go ahead. Go Shelly, we don't see your, it. Start your presentation and we see, we'll see if we can see it at that point. But you don't see it. We just see a dark screen. Oh, darn. Um, and I feel like mine is frozen right now. I've got um, it here. I can pull it up. Yeah, why don't you do that? Uh, boy, I can't stop sharing because my computer is frozen. You'll just have Sorry. to say next, Shelly. What's that? You'll just have to tell us next. Okay. Are you, do you have it up? We do. Can you see it? Okay. I cannot. <laughs> but I cannot see it either. I, it says Shelly Lapkoff has started screen sharing, so I think you've got to disable that. Yeah, the problem is my computer is frozen. I'm surprised you guys can hear me. Um, I can't move it to stop sharing. Um, I don't know what to do other than my whole computer is frozen now. I could uh, turn off my computer and come back on, or I could just talk through the slides, but then the um, audience, the virtual audience would not see the slides. Is, is Roland, you're not able to see anything either? No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we can't. Why do don't it. we, uh, maybe you can, uh, we'll come back to you. You can shut down your computer, reboot. In the meanwhile, I can tell you a little bit of, um, of kind of the process. Um, oh, oh, wait, that worked. Okay, I'm, I'm out. You're out, okay. Okay. All right, Christine, why don't you show the slides? You got it. <laughs> I'm glad we have that as backup. Okay. Can you guys both see it, Mr. Resendez? Yes, Mr. Mayor, we can see it. Thank okay, you. Perfect. Great. Okay, tonight we're giving you an orientation of the redistricting process for your city in particular. Uh, and next slide, please. Uh, uh, can you go back one? Just wanted to introduce ourselves. We've actually been working with Hollister for quite a while. Uh, we transitioned you from at-large to by district elections, and then we redistricted the city after the 2010 census as well. Um, we've been working on redistricting since 1990. We've, we do a lot of various jurisdictions um, and have for many years. This is our fourth round of redistricting. Uh, Jean and I both have PhDs. Uh, she from Stanford, I from UC Berkeley. And uh, so we're well qualified to help you with this process. Next slide. So tonight I'll talk about what is redistricting and why you need to redistrict. We'll look at your current council districts. I'll discuss briefly the legal requirements that we follow. Uh, tonight, I believe you're deciding whether to use a commission or not. And we'll briefly discuss the timeline. Next slide. So what is redistricting? Every 10 years, we have a new census. And with the census comes the need to check and see if your council districts are still balanced, still equal in population. And that's a 14th Amendment of the Constitution. It's uh, the most important thing is that people have uh, equal power to elect. And so the Council districts must be equal in total population. 
we have to follow various federal and state laws. One of those is that your city must adopt by April 17, 2022, the new council districts. They'll be used for the next 10 years until the next census comes out. And uh, incumbents will complete their terms of office even if they no longer live in the district they were elected to represent. It doesn't happen often, but occasionally uh, it does. Next slide. So here are your current city council districts. And this may be familiar to you, but you have four council districts. Uh, and the next slide shows a, a close up of the, the main area, the heart of, the, of Hollister. So you can see some of the boundary lines there. Um, as demographers, we're, we're bound by a lot of different things, including the census blocks, the data that we get. And often the census blocks are awkwardly shaped. Um, so we're constrained by that, but ideally we would use major streets to the extent that we can, so very identifiable boundaries. So this is what was adopted in 2012. And next slide, please. So I want to briefly talk about the legal guidelines that we follow. So we have federal law and there's uh, two major requirements. As I mentioned earlier, the council districts must be equal in population, but we have some leeway at the city level, fortunately. And second is the Voting Rights Act. And that gets uh, a bit of a balancing act. We need to make sure we don't divide protected minority groups, race ethnic groups, uh, is, for example, the Latinx community. Uh, so we don't want to divide them and we don't want to overly concentrate protected groups as well. Because if we over concentrated them, then they would uh, lose their influence in other districts. And yet, uh, there, we had a Supreme Court decision in the early 90s that said you couldn't racially gerrymander. That is, you can't make really oddly shaped districts just to maximize the voting power of protected groups. So we, as demographers, we can't, it's called packing and cracking. We can't pack them too much. We can't crack protected groups and we can't make oddly shaped districts. So that's from the Voting Rights Act and Supreme Court decisions. And then state law, we have a new state law, the California Fair Maps Act um, in 2019 and amended in 2020. And it gives very specific direction on redistricting criteria to use public outreach and public outreach. And you are not a charter city, I believe. So that last line does not apply to you. So next slide, please. So I wanna talk about the population equality because we have the data that we need um, to evaluate your council districts. Now, the ideal council district size would be one fourth of your total population. Now in the city of Hollister, your, you, your population count is 41,890. So one fourth of that would be 10,473. So that's what we're aiming for, for each council district. But we get some leeway and uh, it's called a deviation, the plan deviation be up to 10%. And what that means is the difference between the least and most populous council district can needs to be less than 10% of the ideal district size. And so what all that comes out to is the difference between the smallest and largest district has to be less than 1,047 people. So that's what we're aiming for. Next slide, please. I'll show you what it looks like. So here are your four council districts with the 2020 population in the second column. And uh, 
basically trust uh, council districts one and two are too large. They have a, you know, we can calculate their deviation uh, either numerically or percentage wise, but council district two is, is even larger than council district one. And then council district three is about the right size, but council district four is too small. And probably in adjusting council district four, we're gonna have to adjust council district three. So there's gonna be, there's gonna need to be some shifts in order to get that deviation, which is now 16.4%, to get it below 10%. So that's what we're aiming for. Okay, next slide. Now I wanna talk a little bit about the Fair Maps Act. Uh, because you're required to do uh, various things now uh, that you weren't before. So one is that you have to have a redistricting website and you have to have it up for the next 10 years until the next round of redistricting. And on that redistricting website should be the proceedings that we had during this process. If translation services are requested, you must provide them at your public hearings. You have to offer multiple ways for the public to provide testimony and feedback. And you need public access to demographic mapping data and software. And your city clerk is uh, handling all of that for you. Next slide, please. And you have to hold at least four public hearings and there's specific protocols with those public hearings. And the first uh, meeting, the first public hearing, we cannot present any maps. Uh, that is for the public to give any input, including they can draw their own map and present it to us. So that is a way to encourage the public participation. And uh, you need at least one meeting after 6 p.m. or on a weekend. You have to have definite starting times for redistricting. So if it's part of your, your regular council meeting, you need to set a time specific, time certain. Um, you have to specify that for the redistricting part. Uh, and you need uh, public notice. And much most of the public notice is to be uh, published on your website. Okay, next slide, please. So that was the Fair Maps Act requirements for public participation. The other thing that they did is they said, we, we did not have this before, they said, here's the criteria you should use to draw your maps. And here's the order of priority for them. So here it is. First and foremost, we have to obey federal law. Right. Number two is that the districts, council districts have to be contiguous. So they just have to, they have to be touching. So you can't have an island off somewhere. So that's a very basic requirement is at least make them contiguous. And then three, and this is what's, what's kind of different, is geographic integrity of communities of interest. That's the third criteria. So a community of interest, if people come forward and say, we're a community of interest and we don't want to be divided, then that's uh, an important criterion to follow. Fourth, isn't, uh, doesn't really apply because you are a city. Number five, easily identifiable and understood boundaries. And as demographers, we're kind of partial to that because when the public looks at plans with easily identifiable boundaries, I think they feel more confident in the plan. Number six is geographic compactness. Um, and finally, no political party considerations, which really isn't relevant at the local level because you aren't elected by party, but um, it's more for the legislature. So those are the criteria that we use. And uh, yeah, next slide is okay. Um, I wanted to go over communities of interest and just give you the quote that's in the law. Um, it's a population that shares common social or economic interests that should be included within a single 
city council district for purposes of its effective and fair representation. So some of the um, examples, I think probably most relevant for you all, if there are recognized neighborhoods or there's areas with similar living standards, um, similar income and education levels and similar race ethnic groups. Uh, and we wanna remind people that even though we, uh, we try our best, there are trade-offs and often you can't, if you optimize one thing, you may not be able to optimize the other. And what we like to do, what we think our job is, is to impartially evaluate and just tell you what the trade-offs are in any given plan. What's the pros, what's the cons? And it's not up to us to judge any, um, which one to choose but to just lay out the facts as best we can. If you decide to have a redistricting commission, then they would need to understand these trade-offs and explain, explain them to the public. Okay, next slide, which brings us to the question of, do you want a commission? And if so, what kind? And I believe these um, are not in order of your board report. But I will go through them here. I think we wrote our PowerPoint before the board report. But there are three kinds of commissions, an advisory commission, independent commission, and a hybrid commission. And uh, the fourth option is that you just do it yourself, um, that you take public input and you look at the maps during uh, your either your council meetings or special special council meetings. And I'll go over each one briefly. Next slide. So if you have an advisory redistricting commission, which is what you have done in the past, actually, when we helped you, um, you would appoint the commissioners and the commission would review the data, take, conduct public hearings, take public input, draw maps um, with our help, and then recommend a map or two, you know, map, either one or more maps to you to the city council, and then you decide which map to adopt, which can be the plan recommended by the commission or some other plan submitted. So that's the advisory redistricting commission, also known as ARC. And then option number two is an independent redistricting commission. Um, and here the independent commission makes the final judgment. So the city council would not have any uh, any say in the plan. Whatever the independent commission suggested is what the plan would be, and you would pass an ordinance to adjust the boundaries per the commission's decision. Okay, number three, next slide. So then there's what's called a hybrid, which is similar to an independent, but the, but the commission has to come up with a couple options for you to choose from. So they would, uh, at least two maps would come your way and then you would choose among the maps recommended by the hybrid. And then next slide. So the fourth option is that there's no commission and you do it yourself. You would review the data, you would take public input, you would conduct the public hearings and improve the map. Um, some of the considerations is that it's the shortest timeline, and it's actually the fewest meetings. Like, I, I don't, if you remember, I said you have to have four public hearings. Well, if you have a commission, and let, if it's an advisory commission, you, you, the city council still has to, you still have to conduct three of those meetings, public hearings. So even if the ARC did all their work, you as a city council have to hold three public hearings. So it ends up with the most, um, meetings if you have an advisory redistricting commission. Uh, another consideration is you retain final decision about the map. And the reason perhaps not to do it is if you want to sep separate yourself from the process or if you just don't want to take the time to do it yourself. Okay, so that's uh, our discussion. And then there's different ways. If you do have a commission, there are different ways to appoint a commission. Uh, for the ARC, um, the council can appoint the commissioners. 
But if it's an independent or hybrid commission, then either you need to do a random draw or uh, a panel of retired judges can select the commission. And finally, some uh, deadlines and requirements, as I suggested earlier, April 17th, you have to be done. Um, you need to decide soon, maybe tonight, if you're gonna have a commission and what type of commission or whether you're gonna do it yourself. Um, the city must have a redistricting page on their website and have it publicly available. And I know your city clerk is busy with that and almost ready to share that publicly. And uh, we recommended that we have the pre-map public hearing in early December followed by commission or your council meeting starting in January. Um, I talked to Ms. Black and she wants to do it a little earlier than that and that's fine. I think she'll be suggesting um, some dates to you that um, start in November instead of December. Next slide, please. Yeah, so that's it. So any, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Maybe Thank we don't you, need Mayor. to keep sharing the screen. Thank you, Councilmember Burns. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, my questions could be for either our presenter or our city clerk. And so um, I believe I saw where we have to be completed by April 17th of 2022. And so I, I guess a simple question, and there's probably a common sense answer to it, but I'm gonna ask it nonetheless. When, when you say we have to be done, what does done really mean? <laughs> yeah, and Christine and I were talking about this earlier. I mean, you would have to look at, I thought you just had to adopt the plan, but it may be, uh, Ms. Black was suggesting it might be a month before that for a reason. So we... And that was the only reason why I wanted to up the dates a little bit because we're thinking it's adopt, but what if it's in effect? So it wouldn't hurt us to move it up just a little bit. So I was thinking of a timeline I was thinking of a timeline of holding the introduction, at least, of the ordinance on February 22nd at that council meeting, so that the um, adoption would go on March 7th, and then the ordinance would be in effect by April 7th, meeting that April 17th deadline. Thank you. I, I, I really appreciate being aggressive and being ahead of schedule, because if there are complications that we can't anticipate if done means truly done there's no room for a uh, delay and um, uh, I, I guess my follow-up to that would be when we're talking about maintaining the redistricting website for 10 years uh, is that going to be on the city clerk's portion of the city website or is that going to be independently um, place somewhere and where and how are we going to absorb the and do we even know what the cost for doing that is I, I i believe i've already accounted for the cost of that if you guys approve my appropriation tonight um paul is working it we will paul so it's not just me but paul uh, me and um lap coffin goblet and the um is it m m more, more. Uh, caliper yes more um, mm -hmm. are working together t to create this web page. However, we're thinking we're going to have um, them host it. So we just have a link to their site and then have that done for six months and then take the results of what we've already done and post that on the website. And I was thinking I could put it on the city clerk page, but most people look for that redistricting map on the city council page. So maybe that would be the better place to put it since they're already knowing to go there for that districting map anyway. So, so maybe have a little link right there for them to get to that. Okay. And, and so if we're talking about the initial cost, do we know or can we anticipate what the cost is going to be to maintain this, this link or this page for the next 10 years? And, and my sense is it, it ought to, we ought to just budget line it forever because if we're going to do this every 10 years and the law says we've got to maintain it for 10, 
in 10 years, we're going to be having the same conversation again. Maybe not <laughs> those of us on the dais today, but uh, maybe. And so, um, again, it'd be nice to lock in some dollar figures so that we can maintain a, a, a correct budget. That would be in, in already included in what I've already asked for. Um, but again, we would only be doing that live link um, for them to meet be moving district lines around for six months. That's through the duration of this process. Once we have adopted the ordinance with the map, the final map, whatever it is you decide on that map, um, all that needs to remain up for 10 years is our draft plans, our meeting notes, and of course the final map. Am I correct on that, Shelley? Yes, so there are two different kinds of website, web pages. Yes. The web page that you're required to keep up for 10 years is just to talk about the process. It should have all the meetings, uh, all the draft maps you've selected, any board reports. Like it's kind of we, like a repository of the process. How we came to our conclusion and- And how you, right. Yes. And then this online mapping software is just up temporarily to help people draw plans. And once that process is over, you don't need that anymore. I'm, I'm getting uh, crazy eyed going right, going up and left. So uh, I, I, I think I'm cross eyed, but for the viewing audience, I may appear to be so uh, out of respect, simply. Um, follow up question slash comment. I, I've, I've heard what the options are, and personally, I, I, I think I prefer the advisory redistricting commission. And I'm wondering if the commissioners have to be represent the existing districts, or could they be at large? And uh, my second question would be, we currently have a general plan review committee that's been established. And I know there's a, it's a committee versus a commission. However, could a council member be a member of the advisory redistricting commission? Thank you. I believe the council member cannot be a member of the redistricting commission and nor can your staff or anyone associated with your um with your no, no relative and no one on your election committee re-election committee or you know, um candidate election well, i'm sorry blanking on what to call that um so there are restrictions that's about the only restriction for the redistricting commissioners you can appoint them any way you want, but they cannot be you or your staff or people uh, intimately uh, associated with you. It would be a family member, spouse, parent, sibling, child, or in-law. I have a, a list, it's attached in um, the AB 1276, uh, section 2300. under section 28 sorry but if you if your general plan review committee you could use that as long as uh your council members are on there and no one no relatives are on there okay certainly something to consider although i uh, we do have two council members that participate in that process so shelly thank you i very much appreciate you walking me through as a layperson i i think i actually understand mm -hmm. this and Christine, Yay. thank you as well. So, <laughs> Mayor, that concludes my questions, comments, and thoughts. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, if I can. Go ahead, sir. Thank you. How long, um, Ms. Shelley, does the entire process take from beginning to end? Well, it depends how, how quickly we have the meetings. So right now we were going to spread them out a fair amount because your deadline is later than some of our other clients. Um, so it's just, it's really up to you how long you, how, how quickly you want to do the meetings. But the way Ms. Black suggested it, we would have like one a month and we would need more meetings actually if you have the advisory redistricting commission. So I guess that's what I was getting at. If we were to do it as a council, we are ready. So you're saying we, as we do it as a council, as an entirety, we're required to do four meetings as a council. If we were to do it as a commission, 
we still need to do three plus the three for ourselves plus whatever is required so that's an additional so it would be longer to do it as a commission right yeah i would say maybe three meetings for the commission would it be good so uh one of those meetings can count as one of your four so it would be three plus three so that would be six meetings and if the commission took longer four meetings then that would be seven meetings that Thank we would you. need to schedule. And I heard um, Council Member Burns' Dang. thoughts about having a council member on there. And you know what? I honestly, like, I'm excited about this process. I, I agree, but I don't, I think that the council should do it just in the sake of time. Like I would be excited and honored to, to do this like on the weekends and different times. We'd only have to do four meetings. Um, and it's a, it's a process that we might not ever get a chance to do again. So I would like for the council to consider um, doing this process themselves, not only for the sake of time, um, but for a number of reasons. And I know that in the current situation that we're in with the pandemic, it's been a struggle for even the people to get to, to participate in the GPAC meetings and whatnot. So I would really like for us to, to do it within the four meetings um, so that would be my preference, just for the sake of time and for engagement of the, of the community. Another thing to consider is that some of us represent certain areas that are considered historical or downtown areas. So I think that, you know, we were elected by the people um, and that we know our districts the best. And I would really like uh, to be a part of this process. And I see that Council Member Burns also was interested in having a council member on there. So those are my thoughts. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Council Member Perez? Personally, I like option four. I, I just, I like option four. Her uh, option four, not my option four, right? Because they're, they're different. The hybrid? What's your price? Is that the hybrid you're talking about? Option four is for the council to hold the meetings. Yeah, for the I agree with Councilman or Vice Mayor Resendez. Yeah, I think it's laid out differently in our packet. Yeah. It's kind of mm -hmm. reverse, isn't it? Yeah. Sorry okay. about that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's okay. We're used to it. <laughs> now I'm like Mr. Burns looking cross eyed. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to figure this out. Uh, is it okay? Is that it, sir? I, I agree too. I, I think um, working through the council, your timeline works. One meeting a month. Um, we all know our areas pretty, pretty well. I think that would be the shortest way to do it. And also, I think we could have a better impact. I, having seven, eight meetings, it seems like a lot of extra work for everybody. And then coming back, to, at the end, coming back to us. I would, I would prefer going with the uh, number one four. <laughs> 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 the number one four option. Um, so I would I would go ahead and type up the timeline for you, but if you wanted to, I, I was thinking November fifteenth to have our first pre map meeting. December twentieth would be, and all of these would be public hearings. December twentieth, January eighteenth, with a adoption hopefully of our uh, or introduction, I'm sorry, of our ordinance with our map of choice by February twenty second to introduce then adopt by March 7th so that it becomes effective on April 7th. Right. And that's what the I only I would change is the December date. I think 20th you're in that season, a holiday season. It's our third council meet. It's our, I'm sorry. It's our second council meeting of the month. We, we have one. It's the first and I was thinking we'd have individual or special meetings to do this. Sure. We could do that too. I think that'd be easier. We're focused on it. I, I, I think council member Senate is correct. It, it's kind of fascinating really to uh, be part of that. And I think we are kind of fortunate to be part of it. I could do, um, special meetings on the second Monday of the month. If you'd like that. I thought Mr. I actually Mayor, heard if I may. Uh, uh, go ahead, sir. Thank you. I just, I, I think we should really consider since we're gonna have fewer meetings anyway, Christine, I would really like for the new council um, man or woman to be a part of that process. And I was wondering if we can start when they're um, already on the council. So instead of November, can we do it starting December? We'll be thrown off a month if we do that. 
Okay, I just wanted to put it out there for consideration. I understand, and thank you. Well, yeah, it's a good point, we, but we, I... If, if we can get a schedule down tonight, I could, I could... Can you double up in a month? I, we could. Mm -hmm. We could. Yes. Yes. Definitely. Yes. You can have two. And if, yeah, and you can, you may end up with more than four public hearings if you just, if you can't see if there's, you want to keep fiddling with the map. So uh, that happens too. Mayor. So if you wanted to do our first one December 20th. That's a meeting date. So we'd, we'd want to do a special meeting. Rather than but on the first, the first meeting needs to be kind of a pre-map. Um, what words am I looking for here, Shelley? Our uh, pre-map. Yeah, meeting? we can't we can't show any maps at the first public hearing. So it's to get people. If there's any public comment on communities of interest, where somebody presents a map to you. So I don't know how much typically, or there isn't that much. Um, there isn't that much public comment until the maps. There's actually a map to respond to. Um, that's typical, but who knows? I mean, somebody might come out with a map themselves. So, so, when, so when, as I'm looking uh, at the on. December um, month, if if we do the um, incoming council member on the 13th, that would be where we give them their oath they would be of course elected in november but we would have the results certify the results on the council meeting of the sixth with any luck and then do the oath of office for the new council member at a special meeting on the 13th then their official first meeting would be december 20th or we can throw them into the deep end on <laughs> december 14th i'm with you on that mr mayor <laughs> <laughs> their council member I, I i personally would like to have uh, separate meetings for this so we're again really focused in on it understanding it really well and i think it's going to be an enjoyable experience uh, to go through this council member burns you had a comment or question uh, thank you mayor um i thought i heard vice mayor resendez talk about maybe doing these on like a saturday and i think that would be better for community engagement and a special meeting where people can actually come to the council chambers versus necessarily having to zoom in or it, it gives them a potential option. And, and I think that would be helpful. And I'm not convinced that we couldn't move these forward and start doing these in November. Yes, we wouldn't necessarily have an elected council member, but we may have a pending elected council member pending confirmation of the election. And in addition to that, if uh, more time I think is better because I don't wanna rush through this process, and frankly, we've got five candidates for council district three seat currently, and there's no reason they all couldn't weigh in um, during public comment anyway. So I would think that we could accomplish all our interests and, and have them have the opportunity to weigh in anyway. If we, and, and why? my fear is April will be here before we know it, and I'm already dreading April because it's tax time, and so I don't want to have to have you know, conflict. And so I'd rather do this as soon as we could do it without rushing to do it. But uh, I would like to see it at minimum on a weekend uh, moving forward on a special meeting as the mayor suggested. Thank you, mayor. I do like so, that idea too. Council Mayor Perez. And so you were saying that usually there's not a lot of engagement until the maps come out. Mm -hmm. So even if we had like the first meeting before, like Mr. Burns was saying, before someone's elected and then once they're elected, the maps to come out to get a, a little bit of a head start to give us some leeway in the holidays and especially tax season for Mr. Burns. Uh, yeah, though there is the orientation that we give at that first public hearing. And so if you have a new council member, it would be good for them to hear that orientation or they could they could review notes or something, but it would be Good for them to, I'm gonna basically repeat a lot of what I said tonight at that first public hearing. Yeah. I think looking at that calendar, November 13th would be a good start point. We know who the new council member is. And I guess it's still away from the holiday, so we're not yeah. having that problem. Yeah. And then um, we can move 
to the next meeting in December. Uh, December 11th is when they get thrown into the pool. They get sworn in. Yeah, I, I like that idea. I think it's a great point. So we're looking at November 13th. November 13th, December 11th. December 11th. January 8th. And February 5th. So we're we. I think Mr. Burns is making a good point too. We need to make sure we're ahead of this and not um, scrambling in the end. Yeah. So we have room um, for Probably Mr. Burns to follow all his taxes. Shelley, are you available for those dates? Or yeah, I'm you? just looking. Um, the 11th is a little. We have another meeting that that Saturday. I don't know whether it's a morning or afternoon evening um, already scheduled. Uh, but one of us can, we can split up, Jean and I can split up. Um, so, uh, just wondering. Are we thinking hmm. mornings, afternoons? Yeah, maybe we could decide this a little later after we yeah, see we, we could go through that, but we have a, an idea I think we're yeah. all agreeing on yeah. what I'm hearing. Yeah. And then we can kind of just work out the times rather than trying yeah. to do it right now. Okay. Does that work for you? Yes. Mr. Resendez, are you all right with that? I am. I would just ask that the city clerk um, solicit, like Council Member Burns said, all the candidates that ran for office should be invited because they'll have feedback to represent that um, district and of definitely, most definitely the one that's elected. Thank you. Most definitely, Vice Mayor, I will be sure to do that. So if we were to keep these dates and, and maybe just adjust times, we would still be able to introduce on February 22nd so that we could adopt on March 7th with it being effective April 7th, yes? We would still hold those. Are you saying introduce at the regular meeting? Yeah, so in, we could okay. keep the dates November 13th, December 11th, January 8th, February 5th right. with introducing the ordinance and map that has been selected by then by the 5th on February 22nd we would do the introduction and um, present the map that has been selected and then do the adoption of that ordinance on the 7th so that it becomes effective April 7th it's 30 days after adoption date so that would just put us under the wire, but we would make the 17th date. I think I, this is where I agree with Mr. Burns. It's that, that is pushing it too close to that line. How, and your experience, or your expertise, do you think that it would be an issue, anything would pop up at the last minute that would create a problem for us? I don't think so, and I, I think you have till April 17th. Okay. Actually, but uh, we should check, you should check with um, council on that. It's yeah, April 17th. Mayor, I, I'd yeah. like to, uh, I'd like to ask Mr. Epperson in your legal experience, um, could somebody, if they disagreed, could they, could they um, seek a civil injunction or something to stop us or uh, something that we need to be hopeful that doesn't happen? And if we do a good job, I doubt it would happen. But, but again, I would like a, a cushion because I don't know if this April 17th is a hard date. It seems like it's a hard stop. And, mm -hmm. and, and so um, I understand there's a part to the first and the second reading that it, we, can't, we can't change that. But do we need to pull this thing forward even further than, than we're talking about? Because they all seem like reasonable, realistic dates to move it forward. But, but again, I, just, I, I get a little heartburn. The closer we get to April 17th, the more uh, it's going to be on my mind. I'm, I'm feeling that heartburn too. Right. And, and <laughs> council I, member, oh, I'm sorry. Well, he, go ahead. I was just going to say, yes, of course, so, someone certainly could, and they would do it uh, probably on an ex parte order and try to rush into court because their timeline would be shortened as well. Uh, as to how much time we would need no, need for that sort of thing, you know, for better or worse, that we only come across this once every ten years. So there isn't a great body of experience to know exactly uh, what kind of timeline the court would work on it. But uh, it certainly can be done in the timeline that's been discussed. 
But if there is any litigation, which I wouldn't expect there to be, but if there is, the more time we have, the better. With that, I, I would ask, perhaps January we can have two meetings, one on the 8th and one on the 22nd, so we could be ready on the 8th of February at the first we reading. We could hold a public hearing on a regular council meeting, too, unless you wanted to do all of them on, on the weekend. So If we have to. Yeah, I, I guess well, my concern about the council meetings, we all know that, I mean, tonight it looks like we might be out of here by 11 o'clock, but um, we know sometimes they can run really late and then we're going to really miss what we're really trying to accomplish. That's why I, I really do like the idea of we're focused on one item on those Saturdays. It gives the community a chance to come out. Hopefully they will. And it gives us that uh, that room to make sure we we meet our deadlines with some time to spare. So I would just say January is that opportunity to have two meetings. We'll be well along the way by that time. And if we pretty much agree on everything by say the 22nd of January, then you could have that first reading on the 8th of, or the 7th of February, which will allow us to uh, finalize it at that first meeting in April or March. If you're looking for an extra month, is that what we're? Yeah, to, to make sure okay. we're, we're so covered. So then, if we did January 8th, we would need to do January 8th, January 15th. We did January 8th, January 15th. Intro here. Adopt. And then it goes into effect March 7th. Okay, as we talked about, let's let you figure out some of the times. That buys us and, a whole month. Yeah, and see, see what you can figure out to make it work. I think we're uh, trying to pick dates right now, and we've got to look at, have respect for your schedule, too. Well, and she has to be in, included. Yeah, she has, right. to, yeah, it has so to work for her, too. Why don't we, uh, well, you can work together and suggest the timeline and go from there. Mayor, one final oh, question, sure. thought, maybe. Once we've, once we've hit on the actual dates and times and the location, can we put this out on the city website uh, on social media and maybe also in the local newspapers? Um, I think it'd be very helpful. I would love to see either this. I'd like to see it so full we have to take it to the vets all, frankly, <laughs> because this is big, it is important, and it only happens every 10 years. So we only get one shot to do this right, and we're going to hear about it for 10 years afterwards. So... Um, the more community engagement, I think it would just be absolutely a great thing. So I would just ask for that. Thank you. And because they're public hearings, they must be publicly noticed. But I can advertise. We can definitely do social media. All right. Do we have any questions from the public? I have no speakers, Mr. Mayor. So the two we items two I'm items. asking for tonight is... Um, for an approval on the appropriation and then for you to select whether you want to do it ARC or do it yourselves and I think you guys decided to do it yourselves yes so first we'll have a vote on item 3-1 <laughs> and then we'll give recommendations after that vote correct yes okay is there a motion on item D1 or 3-1 so moved and that would be with the recommendation of the council. No, it, my understanding is that's for the money. Yeah, it's to Oh, for the money. Over. Gotcha, yes. you're right. I second that. Right. Right, there's a motion, there's a second. And roll call vote. Council Member Perez? Yes. Council Member Burns? Yes. Vice Mayor Resendez? Yes. Mayor Velasquez? Yes. Motion carries 4 0. Now we'll move to item two on that. And that would be for the direction, which would be for the council to lead the project and you will come back with a timeline a schedule, to accomplish yes. that. Is that all right with the council? Is there a consensus on that? Yes. Yes. Yes, there is. Well, thank you very much. This is gonna be an interesting project. Looking forward to it. Thank you, Shelley. We'll now move to item G1, reports from city council members regarding their committees. 
Council Member Burns. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I have nothing to report. All right. Uh, Council Member Perez. Actually, this is, is this where I bring up the squishy? Yes. The, uh, this. These are for standing committees. Oh, standing committees. Okay. No, nothing to report. Okay. Vice Mayor Resendez. Nothing to report, Mr. Mayor. I don't have anything to report either. So we'll move to item G2, informational reports. Councilmember Burns. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I, to begin with, I want to thank Mrs. Richmond for the uh, birthday card. I did get it, and thank you very much. I appreciate your uh, personal uh, touch on the card. I wanted to ask the, uh, well, first of all, I want to thank the city manager, but then I also have some questions. I've seen that the speed cushions have now been placed on Sara Vista, and um, I noticed today as I drove down the street, there are three, but are there going to be more? Because my question is, they, they start very close to Sunny Slope, where you turn off a of Sunny Slope onto Sara Vista, but they're not really in close proximity to the elementary school, which is really the rationale by putting them on. And so I could either, I could see if we were going to put one on both sides of the school, one after you turn on from Union and one further closer coming in off of a Sunny Slope. But um, there are three speed cushions and at least one stop sign controlled intersection that I recall, maybe two. But uh, I would have thought if the intent is to slow the traffic as it gets close to the elementary school, then they would have been in closer proximity to the school itself. And so uh, my, my request would be you could leave the three up, you could reposition them, but I would like to at least see a couple in closer proximity to the school. And, and maybe if you've not been out, maybe you could go out yeah. and take a look at that. I'll do that tomorrow morning, but yeah. I, I'll, I I'll, and that. I'll talk to staff about that one also. Okay. Um, I was going to ask the uh, city attorney, often on council on the dais and often even in closed sessions, we talk about consensus. And I would curious if there is a legal definition of consensus because certainly I know when all four or five of us in a five member council agree, well, that's a, that's a majority or, you know, that's a complete majority. Um, but in some cases we might find consensus, is it, is it two, three, or more? And so I would like a legal definition. I mean, in most cases, I think we all uh, uh, can align fairly well, but I would like to know what that really means moving forward. I and wanted to... I'm um, sorry, were you asking for a response now or would you like me to actually formulate a legal definition? I, I, would, I, I don't want to put you on the spot right now. Oh, I understand. I, and, right. and, and, and so um, I would just like to hear in the, uh, the near future what that, what that really is so that we understand it. Understood. You know, a majority is nice, but in some cases we might not get there, but it may still equal consensus. And so for me, I, just, I, I mean, I'm smart enough. I Googled it. I've looked it up in Webster's because I'm old school and I still have a real dictionary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, it, it does explain it, but I'm not convinced that's necessarily the legal definition. And I presume there must be some case law or some legal definition out there somewhere. Understood. I'll put something so, together for you. I appreciate that, sir. Thank you. I wanted to ask council consider um, through a consensus if we could uh, take a look at the uh, existing in place emergency orders that have been uh, issued since COVID uh, uh, has taxed us. And I wanna make sure, it's my understanding because the current council didn't necessarily weigh in on this because we weren't on the, on the council at the time. But I wanna make sure that uh, we're, we're all of a understanding, although we might not all be in agreement as it relates to the emergency orders. It's my understanding that there was a fairly clear direction from the previous council, and my fear is that it may be a, uh, a direction that was more to the letter of the law versus the spirit of the law. And I wanna make sure that we are not going to overzealously pursue or um, enforce with a draconian effect on things. And so I'd like to maybe have that, and, and whether it be in public comment or not public comment, but during the, the general council meeting or in closed session, I would very much like to go and take a look at that so that I understand what it was versus what it may be or what it needs to be. So I'd put that out to the council and, and hopefully I can get uh, support from the council on that. I wanted to um, ask again, uh, I know that uh, Mr. Prado's in the audience and uh, the 
public comment regarding catering and food vending. Um, I don't know if we have a checkoff list or something like that. And I know a certain element it also involves the county permitting. And so I would like to better understand that. I'm hoping that maybe Mr. Prado through the city manager's uh, direction could do a, a educational presentation at a council meeting in the near future so that we can better understand that. I know that there are some very progressive uh, jurisdictions out there that have a wide range of requirements but opportunities. And, and the catering, the food vending, the food truck business has come light years since I remember it 30, 40 years ago um, to where it's now kind of a niche thing. And there's a lot of great uh, companies out there and, and they're not fly by night. I mean, you could easily spend $100,000 on a catering truck in a, in a heartbeat in today's world and they're legitimate businesses. But I also want to be considerate of our, our brick and mortar businesses as well. And so I would like to have some, maybe some, just a general presentation. I think we could benefit from that as well as the community at large. So, um, I wanted to ask also if, um, if at sometime in the near future we could get an update on sound wall maintenance. I've heard some really encouraging things. I've heard and seen that, uh, maybe Caltrans is gonna let us take control of the airline highway. And I, I look very, I'm very excited by the potential. I think our, our, uh, our site is, uh, appearance is, is, is important. And I'd also like the council to consider maybe pursuing taking control of our mobile home park in Hollister because um, the state will give that up if you ask for it. I'm familiar with a jurisdiction that recently just was granted that authority, not to address housing necessarily, but more to address public nuisance related issues. And there's clearly a process if the council had the will to, to move in that direction. I would like to, uh, to deal and look at that as well. And I believe I will, uh, I'll call it good for now. Thank you, Mayor, appreciate <laughs> okay, it. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Perez. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank um, Jose Fernandez for his um, uh, service to the community for being on the Planning Commission. Um, just wanted to thank him for that. Um, and the other one, let me see, Sesquicentennial. Did I get it right? Uh, the 150th um, um, birthday celebration or for for Hollister. I'd like to get that agendized for the next agenda meeting. Um, and I think um, I've been meeting with the uh, various members of the community, um, Integrated Waste Management, um, the awesome Chamber of Commerce, and the awesome Hollister Downtown Association, and other members of society of our community. Um, we got some good things coming up, really good things. So I'd like to get that agendized. Also, um, I'd like to get an update on the, I believe it's the Tyler 311, the Civic Plus, that app that we were gonna be getting for our city. Um, if there's any update where we're at with that. Um, if I may, um, we're currently still working on getting that all set up. Um, there's two parts. There's the um, one that connects through the website where people can come up to the website and you know mm -hmm. report anything on uh, upload pictures and, and you know if they found a pothole and they want to upload a picture that way. We're also working on the app that goes along with that. They kind of tie in together. There's some issues on the back end we're trying to work out with Tyler, um, and, and we're still working on that stuff out, but in the near future it'll come out. I can't really say a date when that's going to, because I mean, we've had some problems setting that stuff up and I'd, but we are working on that. Oh, awesome. Cause I mean, I, I know you, you juggle a lot. <laughs> you are the man. Yeah. But the, uh, it, no, I was just wanting for a quick update and thank you for that. Mm -hmm. the, um, also the, um, what else do I have? Um, the, um, uh, wanted to welcome Amazon to our community. I 
with um, Mayor Ignacio over there. Incredible, incredible um, system uh, that they have there. Um, and I was curious, did your wife get the first package? Oh, there were several packages oh, waiting okay. at the house, yeah. yes. Yeah, <laughs> but um, no, I just wanted to welcome them. Um, and you know what, it's through this um, the whole COVID stuff we've been going through, and lately it seems like there's been a few uh, ribbon cuttings uh, to go that I've been t attending. And uh, it's just really see, it's really great to see our community thriving in that direction. Um, and there's, uh, I just, I'm just really proud to be a, a member of this community. You guys, um, from our staff to the city staff, police and fire, um, especially our city staff up here, it's, it's really great. But uh, yeah, and once again, thank you, Jose. Thank you. Uh, Vice Mayor Resendez. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, <clears throat> couple of things now that school's back in session I'm, I'm getting calls for concerns traffic concerns about the safety of our students particularly along Buena Vista and Apricot I've spoken to the staff and the staff always does a fantastic job um, of course I go through the I, I go through the um, through the city manager I let him know he has communicated with um, I, Abraham Prado about Buena Vista and he gave an update um, and Abraham is very good at communicating with the community members and then getting back to me. So I'd like for us to, to prioritize that. And Abraham did tell me that's coming to the council soon. We're done with Central Avenue um, and we are, Buena Vista is part of our complete streets program. And I'd like to see that come to fruition because we do have another housing um, project that's gonna be built on Buena Vista and people are moving here and they're concerned. And we always have been about the safety of the children going to Calaveras. Apricot is another big one. And again, I brought my concerns to the city manager. We all have money allocated for uh, traffic studies. And my understanding is that there will be a traffic study on Apricot. So that's Rancho, um, no, I'm sorry, not Rancho. <laughs> R.O. Harden and Calaveras. We need to ensure that the children have a safe route to school there. Um, and then uh, Councilman Perez brought a, a good point, um, Amazon, and I, and I communicated this with the mayor. I was really sad that I didn't get to go to that, um, I, but I do work during the day. So what I would ask, and I know that uh, council member Burns also does work and our schedules are probably not as flexible as other council members. So I would really like whenever we do these events that we all get invited first and foremost, and that we do our best to prior to make it a, around a time that we can all attend. That was um, something I was really just sad. They did a great job. I saw all the pictures. I'm glad we have representation there. And it was just, it was really fun. And I would have loved to have been a part of that. So I too want to welcome Amazon and I'm glad that you guys all did go, but next time I want to go too. <laughs> That's my report. Thank you. Well, since my sh my wife shops every day on Amazon, I I'm sure Saturdays or Sundays would be just fine for the next one. So I want to give my my updates. And as I mentioned, Amazon, uh, congratulations for opening your facility here. Really is an impressive operation. I think one of the things that really um, stood out for me. Sometimes people will talk about. Um, a company of whether it's fair or not as far as the wages one thing that was very interesting with Amazon is the person that's running that entire 130,000 square foot facility started at Amazon a little over two years ago stocking the trucks and now he is the manager of this entire facility that kind of shows you what uh, their commitment is to their employees they want their employees to move up and take the opportunities they have to offer. So that was pretty exciting. It was fun, obviously, to uh, be with everyone and load the first package onto the truck. So looking forward to their success. The new shopping center, as I understand it, is hoping to do a groundbreaking ceremony, and we'll make sure it's on a Saturday. I think they want to do that late in October. We'll check to make sure that it's still on schedule. Uh, Councilman Burns and I did start with the, as we talked last at the last meeting, created the ad hoc committee beautification of our, our community. There are several projects that we want to be working on. The sound walls, uh, working with uh, 
more professional companies that have the staff to really go through there on a monthly basis and make sure they're trimmed correctly, uh, the correct irrigation, all those things that need to be done uh, monthly. We're looking at how we can do that. Looking at what we can do as far as many of the trees in our town, if you look through uh, different areas of our city, you'll see areas where the sidewalk is lifting some places very high and some kids appreciate that it's a place for them to practice their skateboarding skills but that happens because the wrong trees are put in um, homeowners over time decided they want a different type of tree and put one in not realizing the consequences of planting the wrong type of tree the root system so one of the ideas is how can we work with the homeowners to give them back the rights to really maintain the trees and uh, take ownership of their own trees and recommendations on how to uh, water them correctly so we don't keep having this issue of sidewalks lifting. That was one of the conversations. As Councilmember Burns mentioned, airline highway uh, between Santa Ana and on through, really through Sunny Slope, they're looking at, we actually we requested that they allow us to um, take over maintenance of that and they are working through their process to give us that authority so we can do that and at the same time we are applying for a grant to beautify that whole corridor which would be very exciting it's it's a it could be very beautiful we we do see weeds and tumbleweeds right now and it's very frustrating for all of us but at this point it is caltrans property and we're not allowed to just go in and um, do what we want there that's a very important step we'll be taking as mr burns mentioned also the mobile homes in the property there are ways to uh, give us a little more authority on that I, I fully agree with that and i'm looking forward to some of the recommendations mr burns going to bring to us from some of the other experience he's had with the mobile homes there's been a conversation of rvs throughout our community for several years we had been working on that new policy several years ago and that had stopped for different reasons covid and so on but it is time for us to go back to that policy right now we have several rvs parking in different areas of the city um, some people might say that's not a big deal but when that rv does leave it always seems to leave with a whole pile of trash behind it and it's really not fair to some of the different neighbors neighborhoods so we need to get that into check so we have a policy in place that of course you can park your rv if you're going to be using it to go for a camping trip and if we had the three-day pass i believe it was 72 hours in the past we need to get back to that to get that permission and those that are not getting their permission they can be cited so we want to keep moving towards some of these ideas and also the homeless cleanup i believe the uh that's going to happen again real soon we are working with the county county is doing their part to try to get more uh, land more building space so they can house more of the homeless and make sure that we do meet all the legal requirements and make sure that the homeless are getting the services they need it's not an easy thing uh, sometimes people say just arrest them all well you don't just arrest your way out of homelessness you you give the treatment they people need and we can get to a better a better place soon and i'm Looking forward to continue working with our partners and again, working with some of the ideas we have. Now going back to downtown, it's the rainy season's coming. Can we get those engineers to talk about what we need to get the covers on top of our parklets? So we give them a, uh, well, I don't know if we say rainproof, but give them a, a place they can still have uh, their customers sit outside. Those have been such a major success and I was, having dinner at one of them recently and just really love the atmosphere of what it brings to our downtown so any help we can provide them would be i'm sure greatly appreciated from them and that's all i have city manager yeah I'll take care of business first <coughs> councilmember burns uh, asked by by consensus if we can talk about the emergency order is that okay with council to bring back i i, I guess i wanted to clarification when you said the emergency order what exactly are we talking about i'm talking about any emergency order that was issued by the state or by the county uh since COVID has come on board mr mayor if i can uh yeah hang on for a second though but uh i'll, I'll get right back to you mr Sendis. you mean 
So here we work off of the uh, state order and then only from the, and the doctor only. The county mm. itself cannot issue an order. It has to be from the state or from the doctor, I believe, is how we were doing it at one point when we finally Correct. The last one I believe we left off was a state or county health officer. Yeah. So is that what you're talking about? Yes. Okay. okay. Now go ahead, Mr. Sanders. You had a question on that? Uh, not necessarily a question. I was just going to say that we're headed into the flu season. I would be very reluctant to make any changes until after the flu slash winter season. Um, again, I understand the points that you make and I agree with you, but I would not like to revisit anything or to make any changes until after the flu and slash cold season. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Do you have any? Only I'm not necessarily proposing to make changes. I would like to better understand what the previous council uh, spoke about so that we can either be all on the same page or maybe we will deviate or or maybe uh, we will get consensus, maybe we won't. But I, I really want to have a conversation is really what I'm proposing at this time, whether it be in the public or in closed session. To understand what happened in the past. I, and I, I don't have an issue with that. I, again, I, I understand, you know, <laughs> Well, we had the uh, unfortunate experience of being there when it all happened. I understand you, you guys weren't, but it's important to understand the how we came together, what rules we were following, and then where we're at today with those rules. As I said, no longer is it county; it's uh, only state or health doctor rules. But I, I can I can understand your question. And I can I can support you on that for for a conversation, not to change the rules but to understand how we got to the rules. Is that what you're asking for? Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Perez. I, I don't know if I can add this. Actually, today, I, when you guys brought up the um, homelessness, I was thinking about, um, I actually met some um, Pacific Union police officers today. They are going through the area, and I just yeah, they were. just wanted to add that. Yeah. So, That's Mr. Mayor, if I today. can. Go ahead, sir. Thank you. And then again, I would just point out that I would like to wait to have that conversation, council member, and if it's okay after we have the new um, council member, councilwoman, councilman, so that they can, we can, don't have to repeat it twice. So if we could just wait until December, that would be probably ideal. I would, I actually, I, I respect that, uh, Vice Mayor. I would like to have it sooner. And if we need to have it again, I'm, I'm certainly open to that. But there are certain things that um, are, are time sensitive that I'd like to have a better understanding about that um, unfortunately the new council member won't be on board at that point. This could be, a, are you requesting this closed session or in public? I, I'm open to either. I, I would, I would, uh, I would uh, defer to our, our attorney. Um, if it's all right with the council, what I prefer to do is look at the request and look at exactly what we bring back and then make that decision and have a staff put it on either open or closed as, as is appropriate. That's fair. Thank you. I believe there was a consensus on that. If you can make that recommendation. Correct. Yeah, that, that's what I took it out. Is okay. We're, we'll get the definition, but that's what I believe <laughs> I, have we got is consensus. Uh, so, uh, Council Member Perez uh, brought back asking for consistent for, to bring back the funding for the 150 and probably maybe the status of where we're at so far with the, uh, the 150 year uh, anniversary. And are you, is Council okay that we bring that back? I I'm on board. Yeah, I think it's important for the HCA and uh, Chamber to kind of present some of their ideas. We can share that and have a conversation so we're all on the same page on it. Yeah, perfect. Uh, then, then also just to let council know that the work staff has started working on the improvements at Clower Park. You'll see that they uh, actually tore some things out, out and they're just getting it ready to put some cement slurry in there and then start putting in the actual new equipment. Great. And that's all I have to report. Excellent. Thank you very much. Okay. City Attorney. Thank you. No statement, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. City Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. I just wanted to um, give an update on, um, I wanted to report that for the first time, the city clerk's office 
did not receive candidate FPPC filings by the FPPC due dates for our special um, election in November. It's never happened before. I don't know. I don't understand why, but um, I did send out an email. I've never had to send email reminders before. And after I sent the email, I did receive three out of the five. One of our candidates is not following our resolution 2021-129 on campaign finance reform. All FPPC forms received have been posted on the City of Hollister's City Clerk's webpage under elections, and I'll just continue to post them as they come in. That's it. Thank you. I, I would ask, when you say they're not following the rules, what? Uh, it, the resolution um, states there's certain um, resolution on campaign finance reform has specific requirements regarding reporting and dollar limits and that sort of yes. thing I think is what the city clerk is referring yes. to and that appears not to have been followed or at least we don't have the evidence that it's been followed at this point and I'm sorry did I did I hear you mention that those that material would be provided online everything I have received to so far right. has and been provided online and will continue I'll continue to update it as I receive it but that's all I can do I, I'm just reporting that out because it's just unusual it, so Over the limits, I, th I think I, I heard, wh what are we talking about? What kind of dollars are we, I mean, if, if I, I don't want to specifically probably say, um, but I, I have posted everything that I have on the website and it'll be pretty, I'm just letting you know that this is just super highly unusual so if I go to the city website, look at your area of expertise, and I, I, I my sense is what you're telling me is I, I probably could draw some conclusions. And based on those, if I wanted to ask you questions at the next council meeting, I, there'd be nothing that would prevent me from asking those questions, would there be? Um. Well, Council Member Burns, it depends on exactly what the questions are. I, I would say occasionally, depending on what the questions are, and I'm sure yours are all very appropriate, but it could put the city clerk in an unusual position, but it's certainly something we're willing to discuss with you. Is, is there a chance that we could, we could agendize this for closed session for the next regularly scheduled council meeting? I think by then... Um, close? I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I, I was just thinking by then there may be some some questions that I will have and maybe it's best to be in closed session. I don't know if it, if it's going to put the city in some financial mm. concerns or litigation concerns. You know, for me, I, I take offense to the fact that there are ordinances that this council has worked hard on and, and people are, it sounds like they're, they're either intentionally ignoring the requirements or they're, uh, you know they're they're receiving bad advice I, I don't know until i go and look but i absolutely will be there tomorrow morning and um you know it, it kind of makes a mockery of the system if people aren't going to play by the rules or need to be clear and define consequences and so maybe maybe that's why it would be best in closed session although i'm happy to talk publicly once i have an understanding of what the what i've heard this this evening i, I mean i'm not I'm more than happy to be candid and direct. I mean, um, you know, th there, there was a specific intent and a purpose for those, and if people are just going to disregard them, well, then I have some real challenges with the integrity of those individuals. Understood, Council Member Burns. Um, uh, any discussion in closed session, everything's supposed to be an open session. The closed session items are essentially an exception to the rule that everything's in, in open session, and there are a series of, of items that you can discuss, and we're very limited by that. Whether or not th that fits within it, I, I'm not certain that it does, but I'll certainly take a look at it. If it is, we can, uh, I bring everything into closed session that I think is appropriate and the council needs need to be aware of and needs to discuss in closed session. Sure, so then so. maybe we schedule for open session and then if it, if, it, if it starts to go that direction, stop me and we can schedule it for a future closed session because um, 
the rules are made not to be broken. There's, there can be an exception, but I, I think the spirit of the ordinance is clear <laughs> and, and um, it was done with a specific intent. And so um, I take offense to anybody that's gonna blatantly disregard the city clerk's inquiries and, and the direction of this council as it's based on the ordinances that are codified. Understood. Thank you, Councilmember Perez. Go ahead. I think this brings up a lot of <laughs> a lot of stuff that was overlooked when we did all this stuff. First of all, is are these FPPC violations? Any of these these um, uh, are they just our city code? Our city? Yes. They're just our city. It, they are well, FPPC we, violations. So we want to so avoid drawing any legal conclusions or even going too far in the discussion could on agenda item, but. Uh, missing a deadline right so could be construed as a I mean if, if I guess my my thing is if first of all if if we're being offended because they're not um, following the rules what are we gonna do what are you gonna do second of all if 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 it's an FPPC violation aren't they in charge of, of um, disciplining or fining or working on that because and it's like, what are we, what are we going to do about it? Be offended? What's, are you going to tell them they can't run? I, I think we should be offended. And I think Councilor well, I mean, is I mean, correct. It's not being offended. It's like, what, what action is there going to be done? I think that's part of the reason we worked on those lo uh, new rules was to make sure that. So where's the teeth in this? What is the, how are we going to punish them? Well, we, I think that's what we look at. We have to look at what teeth do we have on our side to enforce any of the rules and if we don't have that make sure we're implementing some sort of I guess fine or something because you know how do you run for office and out of the gate not follow the rules so I, I guess I, I understand what you're saying I get it's it. not I get right it. it's not fair for the public well, I mean I am concerned that we're, we're we're going too far in the conversation we're discussing an okay. item that's not actually agendized for discussion Okay. If okay. we can get, I have some. I have some questions, Mr. Mayor. Go ahead, sir. Thank you, Christine. When do the mail-in ballots go out? They are. Um, I believe the last I heard from the county is that they would be mailed out on the seventh. Thank you. Um, so, Councilmember Burns, I'm concerned about your request because I think it's going to be a little bit too late. Um, I have got some more questions. Christine, were all of the requirements communicated to the candidates? Yes. The one, so I'm at home, I can look up the, I know how to navigate through and I can look it up. The candidate that's collecting, did they sign? No, hang on a second, we don't wanna go. We, we can't go there right now. Uh, okay, I've got far. more questions. I've got go more ahead, questions. Sir. Ahead, Did everybody sir. sign the agreement to abide by the rules? At this time, candidates were provided the agreement and provided the ordinance and provided the resolution on campaign finance reform, but are not at this time required to sign. Thank you. I'm not going to get into specifics, but I do. This is something that is very concerning to me. And I've mentioned this before, the decisions that we make at the council, at the dais, can make people millions of dollars, period. I'm gonna leave it at that, I'm not accusing anybody, but according to our code of ethics that we adopted as council members, we have an obligation to police each other when we are not following those rules. We also have an obligation to protect the public's interests. I take great offense to people not following the rules, especially because I was a victim of what's going on now. It creates an unfair disadvantage to people. I'll leave it at that, thank you. Can we maybe, can you send us an email tonight of describing what's going on or uh, should we go look at, how do we find this information so we know what's going on? And then if they're not following the rules, can we have if there's no enforcement, is that something we can come back, have an emergency meeting to put in some type of enforcement or fine or something? I mean, how could we, we, we can be in this situation? 
again, I'm 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 very concerned that we we are okay. approaching or surpassing the line between uh, uh, a city clerk report versus Thank city you. council discussing item not agenda. We'll leave it at that then. Yeah. Thank you for for that. All right. Anything else you have to report? Chief, do you have any report? Yes. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. All, all I wanted to remind everyone is that we're starting our annual fundraising in October for cancer awareness. We're wearing officers are authorized to wear the pink patches. And uh, they're also, uh, some of them are uh, paying a, a fee, a donation to be able to have facial hair. All that, infra that money that's generated this month is going to go to a nonprofit here locally. And the, for the months of November and December, the POA, the Hollister Police Officer Association, is also doing their fu um, donations for, the same, for those months. And um, my understanding is that for November, it's going to go to prostate cancer research. And they have still haven't decided what nonprofit they're going to be giving the money to for December. But over the course of the few years that we've been doing this, they've given over $10,000 locally in, with this uh, fundraising effort. But anybody interested in the coins, the pink coins or the patches, they're for sale at the police department um, um, until they run out. So thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, with that, we'll go ahead and move to item G4. Or did G3? Did go, yeah, actually, G3. Yeah. Did I skip our one? Yeah. yeah, G3. Thank you, Mayor and City Council. Um, this is just a presentation for the public and an open session to kind of go over what the City Clerk's Department does. I've prepared an overview of the status of the City Clerk's Office. The City Clerk is a local official for elections local legislation, the Public Records Act, the Political Reform Act, and the Brown Act open meeting laws. The city clerk serves as, as a liaison between the public and the city council and provides related mu municipal services. The city clerk's office is currently a two-person department. The city manager's office had authorized the hiring of a deputy city clerk on May 12, 2018. The city clerk's office um, works on the city council agendas and packets. We create the agendas and packets prior to a meeting and after each meeting. We process the city council agenda packets, scan, obtain city signatures, notarize, record, and file. We are the elections official for nominations, FPPC. We work with um, San Benito County Register of Voters, and I work the elections with them local legislation auditor, municipal officer, political reform filing officer, records and archives, public inquiries and relationships, city council support services, fireworks permits, ABC licenses, claims against the city, claims for the city, public assembly permits, parade permits, block party permits, banner requests, proclamations, recognitions, notary, receive subpoenas and summons, we receive appeals for the planning commission, we take submitted city council authorized documents that need to be recorded to the county recorder's office. We do oaths of office for all new and promoted personnel. For commissions, we advertise, accept applications, create staff reports, follow up correspondence, acquire assuming slash leaving 700 forms, which are your statements of economic interest. We communicate with each other by providing um, names and emails and phone numbers of who th um, their contact will be and provide them agendas and who their contact will be to provide them agendas and provide them their meeting times. We also have special assignments from council, um, Hollister Municipal Code Changes, Campaign Reform. For the Fair Political Practices Commission, we make sure that they have their 700 form statements of economic interest. Not all, all employees, we keep um, their 700 forms, but only our 87200 filers need to be turned into the FPPC for the 700 form. The campaign forms, 87200 filers only, which also includes the Planning Commission, and we ensure ethics training compliance. Electronic pro programs implemented with, of course, our IT department. Uh, March 2018, IQM2, we did the minute track, agendas and minutes. We still have some occasional issues. Most of those turn out to be human error. In May of 2018, we changed um, to Municode for our Hollister Municipal Code, which has a more modern look, has the ability to download in Word, email and the ability to use Google Translate. 
In September of 2019, we acquired NetFile, which is electronic campaign and conflict of interest filings and tracking of ethics and harassment trainings. February of 2019, in 2019, we upgraded Laserfish to Avante, electronic repository, I should say we, Paul, upgraded um, Laserfish to Avante, electronic repository for records, public access through web link to search for documents and promote transparency. In March of 2020, uh, we acquired Zoom, worked intensively with information systems and technology director to work out how to best use Zoom for council and commission meetings. And September 8th, we, obtired, we obtained um, e-signature e software. Electronic programs still in progress. We're currently working with Municode to perform, perform the state law referencing. I'll be work, I'm working with City Attorney Epperson on that um, for our entire Hollister Municipal Code to ensure our code complies with state law and provide links where applicable. In January 19th of 2021, you approved our contract with Lapkoff and Goblet. You got to meet Shelly tonight um, to have her on retainer at that time. Um, and our first meeting with her was tonight. Um, we have an election scheduled for November 2021 for the District 3 special election. And we will be holding another election November 2022, which would be our general municipal election. We established a relationship with San Benito County Elections Department starting um, further back than probably most of Jerry's years um, for me, 2014, and continues the relationship by working elections for the county. Um, events and training, our annual training programs for myself and the deputy city clerk is new law and elections. That's where they introduce um, the new laws and changes that, and we learn how they affect us and the council. Um, the City Clerks Association of California holds their annual conference. I am um, hopefully going to attend the Pacific Leadership Program my second year next year. And I'm hoping um, Nova receives her Master Municipal Clerk Certificate by 2022. Um, electronic programs for the future. We are currently looking at um, purchasing a Public Records Act software program. Um, would help us not only dis define how many um, Public Records Act requests we get, but also which departments are being hit the hardest. So the data may not only help us keep track of it and keep it organized, but maybe show which departments may need more staff to help with that. Um, the only other thing we could think about um, for a possible future electronic program would be a boards and commissions program to help facilitate the filing of council vacancies. We looked at one, and, but it was way too expensive for what we do. We, we couldn't see spending that amount of money for that. So, um, And I believe that's, that's it. Our, uh, city clerk's record retention we're, and destruction that's constantly ongoing. We'll be celebrating our city clerk's week um, the week of May 1st through 7th in 2022. And we're still working on archiving resolutions into the binders. For Hollister Municipal Code, again, we're working with the Muni Code State Law Referencing and working with the city attorney to create an ordinance to add a section campaign finance reform to the Hollister Municipal Code. Um, claim status, I just received a, a new report this week, so I'll be sure to continue to send those claim statuses to council. And thank you for allowing me to share that with you. Thank you. Any questions to council? Councilmember Burns. Uh, thank you, Mayor. So, uh, Madam City Clerk, thank you for what you and your staff do. It's amazing. I think uh, this is a classic example, again, of why it's, I, I think it would be very important, not only for the city clerk, but I think the chief of police and the police department have set a good uh, president by issuing an annual report. I think often when people come into the city of Hollister, they're, you know, we're small, we're friendly, <coughs> excuse me, and we're, we're busy. And I, you just, I, I'm blown away by all the things that you and a staff of one do. And so um, thank you. Uh, 
I, city manager, I would really like to see an annual city report, whether it be uh, calendar year or fiscal year. Uh, I, I think there's a good template from what the chief has established. And I think the community could benefit from seeing that uh, online to know exactly what each department does. I would actually like to see maybe each department report out uh, once a month to walk through all the departments because I'm sure each of the department heads could speak to the same degree and level that the city clerk has, although they have bigger staffs. And so I think that's good. Christine, I only have one other question for you. Uh, do you do weddings as well? <laughs> Actually, city clerks um, are able to, um, I forget the word. Marry people? Ordain, yeah. Ordain, ordain yeah. yeah. You can actually too. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, why would I take away from the city clerk's <laughs> opportunities? But, but we haven't even tried to implement that here, be namely because the county does it, so. Uh, I, I think we might do it better. So I'm just saying, thank you. Thank you. Seriously, thank you for you, what you do and what your staff does. It's amazing. Thank, thank you, Mayor. You. Thank you. Any other questions from council? Do we have any speaker cards? I think that was a short list. Yeah. I, have, I have no speakers, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Well, again, thank you for all you do, you do here. We'll now move to item G4. Item G4. I have uh, received a request to fly the from um, to fly the prostate cancer awareness flag the month of November 2021 so I am just seeking um, council consensus any questions from council absolutely support this I think this is I uh, thank you mr. Burns for bringing this forward it's very important um, so please support it uh, you have a comment, uh, uh, thank you, Mayor. I do. I'd like to take credit for this, but I can't. One of our, our members of our community has approached me and uh, had quite a story that I'll leave as personal and not bring forward. But, but again, I think this, this is a classic example of what that community and the unity poll should be used for. And um, the community member is also going to provide the flag, which is an American flag that is, uh, as I recall, it's a, a gray and black color and it's flown vertically and it's got a, a a blue or a teal color ribbon on it with the word to the right fight and i think it's so important that we as community fight to support our uh, our, our community and any of the people in our our, our community that are suffering from uh, prostate cancer or any other form of cancer or, and frankly any other illness as well so i very much hope the council will move forward to support this thank you mayor thank you sir do we have any speaker cards? I have no speakers, Mr. Okay. Mayor. Any other questions or comments from council? Is there a consensus to move forward? Yes. Yes, yes Mr. Mayor. Yes. I don't, there's a consensus to go ahead and move forward with the flag. Thank you. Again, thank you, Mr. Burns. Item F5 uh, is mine. Again. G5. Oh, G5, I'm sorry, G5. I'm like, we're yes. going back to F again. <coughs> so. At the August 26th Planning Commission meeting, we had a Planning Commissioner announce his resignation and that that night would be his last night. Since that night, I have tried um, to receive a letter of resignation. Um, I've sent four emails, a phone call, plus a request um, from our net file system because he has to do a 700 leaving form. I have not received a response from him, but my final email to him say, stated that if I didn't hear back, that would be considered his resignation letter, although I was hoping he would confirm that. I still have not heard, so rather than wait any longer, I'm requesting from council if we can go ahead and advertise to fill the position. And since that time, I've had another resignation from the Planning Commission. So we now have two openings. We, we currently still have a quorum of three, but we're down two. Okay. I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Mayor. I think Councilmember Burns, are you, were you about to make a comment? I, I, a question, Go ahead, actually. Go ahead, Mr. Burns. Uh, th thank you. Um, and again, maybe this is more of a city attorney question, but and I'm not suggesting that this planning commissioner or any others have abandoned their responsibilities. Uh, and I understand life drives us to do things spontaneously. 
but I'm wondering if it would be helpful to have somewhere in our ordinances something where if, a, if somebody is a, a fails to uh, attend a meeting for you pick the number two three or more that is considered an abandonment of their uh, of their assignment or their duty and at that point we move forward because you know we, we can't be um, limited by our ability and in this case now we're down to three and, and I'd like to move forward and I think the city uh, clerk has gone above and beyond the responsibility now we do have the the video that clearly stated that I reviewed and and so I would I don't know if there's a need to do that maybe it already exists and I'm I'm ignorant about that but if it, if not it does exist councilmember burns it's part of the bylaws problem solved thank you and, and I can follow up with the city clerk regarding that making sure that in fact that uh, we've met whatever the requirement is in the bylaw which I don't remember exactly off the top of my head but it is there council members Resendez is correct about that thank you uh, mr. Price you had a comment the um, did we have other applicants that we were considering at that time or this was just appointed and these were just appointed correct these are uh, yeah. appointed, correct. Yeah. I could go back and look to see who wasn't selected and call those and see if they're still interested, but I would still like the opportunity and, and, and request out, yes. um, to at least advertise and, and put it out there. But if you guys would rather me um, just look at our pool, if you will, I, I thought we had several. I, th I think we did, then, and, but, but I'd like to see it go out again anyways. But uh, yeah. I could definitely include those as I, I'll contact them see if they're still interested and then include those in your pool yes that's okay. what I would, yeah, just to add them back in yeah I was gonna say to be fair to the public put it out there and you might find people that you didn't know before that are interested that'd be helpful and as far as going back to the resignation I think maybe mr. Burns is making the point I think you're making the point that um, if somewhere were someone was to resign at a meeting that could be the resignation so we're not having to go through a process of waiting to see if it was true or not if somebody says I'm resigning tonight they resigned type of a deal yeah I think that would require amending the bylaws which again I don't remember off the top of my head but if I remember correctly it would which is not a problem that can be yeah, done I think that's important because I that. think there's lost time there um, as we're Mayor. Saying, so go ahead mr. Uh, Resendez thanks I, I'm just wondering I thought I heard Christine say there's only three planning commissioners is that true and if so then which two I I heard the last one that we're talking about which is the other one that resigned Salvador Mora resigned as well but so who's the other Jose one Fer I, Jose Fernandez oh okay I didn't know that thank you but you did receive his resignation okay good perfect thank you so we're I think we're all in agreement to put it out there again to the public and definitely go definitely okay and I'd like the suggestion if I can mr. mayor go ahead um, I, I remembering the bylaws I don't think it includes that if somebody says that they're going to resign at a meeting that it's considered a resignation so uh, I agree with it would have to go through the Planning Commission or the city clerk I think to bring it to all the commissions and then we have to adopt it um, at the council level final I, I think so because I think you know, as Mr. Burns says life goes on and sometimes people will say something and then they just want to move on with their life and but legally here we have to follow certain rules and that puts us in a bind like we're seeing now if perhaps I could get help from Jason with language then I could send that out to each commission so that they can post it on their agenda for um, a, an approval from the commission and then have it brought back and adopted by council certainly I, I think we have a direction so thank you do we have any speaker cards on this item I have no speakers mr. mayor All right H I J and K there's no business is there a motion to adjourn so moved there is a motion is there a second second motion and a second roll call vote please councilmember Perez yes councilmember Burns yes Vice Mayor Resendez? Yes. Mayor Velasquez? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries 4 0. And thank you, everyone, for uh, coming out tonight. Lightning Good night, speed, everybody. Lightning speed meeting tonight. Good night. <laughs> Good night, everyone.
<laughs> no. Not the recording radio. stopped. Did they win or lose? I had a vets commission meeting. Did you get my